Bob Ratstead is a senior engineer at Reservoir Labs. He specializes in secure systems design, intrusion analysis, analysis, and network forensics. So, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, as Jeanette said, my name is Bob Ratstead. I'm a senior engineer at Reservoir Labs. Um, we uh, work on a scalable uh, bro-powered appliance called R-Scope. Um, so in a former life, uh, I was a network security analyst at a university, um, and now I you know, work on R-Scope, and um, I sell R-Scope, um, and we're hiring. So get that out of the way. Um, so I, I, I kind of wanted to start off uh, and talk a little bit about um, what we've talked about in the past. So we've come to BroCon um, for a, a number of years, and uh, we've generally talked about uh, Bro internals and um, you know scaling Bro. And this year, um, I thought it would be nice to talk about something different um, and talk about a little bit of our experience in um, you know essentially deploying Bro to uh, enterprise environments and um, you know, kind of talk about a little bit of what we've seen um, in applying Bro. So uh, this talk is gonna be a little bit philosophical. Um, I assume that a lot of the stuff I'm gonna go over is stuff that uh, you've, you either know intuitively, um, but uh, perhaps not. Um, I wanted to take a step back and kind of look at Bro um, from a like, kind of high level and look at how Bro is applied um, at a kind of higher level. So. Um, so Bro is really powerful. Um, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, I think it's pretty self-evident that like the, uh, the, the, the Bro scripts you know, that, that extract uh, information from the protocol parsers are really valuable to uh, you know, kind of enriching your SIM or your uh, data analysis tools uh, with uh, data from the network. Um, so, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, what Bro can be used for um, in terms of scripting and talk a little bit about what it may not be able to be used for. So um, the idea here, uh, the, the, the talk is about context, and I think that uh, Bro is really useful for bringing context to security events and uh, bringing context to uh, just uh, general events inside of an IT environment. So um, the way that I came to Bro was realizing that snort alerts are super hard to trust. So you have some alert that says, hey, you know, you're talking to the Russian business network or you know, something is happening, um, but I don't really know what that thing is. Um, you know, generally, I get a small PCAP, but I don't really have any context for what that alert means. Um, I assume a lot of you have kind of come to Bro in that same, that same place. Um, so. Uh, how is Bro used? Um, Bro can be used to analyze traffic in real time or analyze traffic at rest. Um, being that uh, you know, Reservoir Labs has a you know, uh, Bro-based appliance, and you know, we're, our goal is to scale Bro and, uh, and you know, use it um, inside of an enterprise, we, we focus mostly on uh, analyzing traffic in real time rather than traffic at rest. And so the rest of my talk is going to be um, you know, assuming that we're talking about analyzing uh, traffic in real time. So um, how is Bro applied to streaming network data? So um, as I said before, it's pretty self-evident that people use it as a sensor for network metadata and files. Um, so you know, people essentially can just turn Bro up and get a lot of information out of it just without doing anything. So no Bro script involved, just turning Bro on is super useful. Um, but it can also be programmed to do interesting things. So um, it can be used, um, I guess, in a former life, it was referred to as an IDS, and I think that that is still um, somewhat applicable, um, but uh, I think you need to you know, think deeply about like, what it is that uh, you're going to use Bro for um, if you're going to program it with IDS policy. So, um, Bro produces logs and files, not PCAP. Um, you know, in talking to some people, uh, this is a really important distinction. Um, Bro extracts relevant data by default, but not all data. So it can be programmed to extract as much data as you want, but you don't 
get full PCAP. Um, a lot of people will say, I need PCAP, or this event didn't happen. So prove it to me, I need to have the full forensic data. This is, of course, uh, you know, not always the case. Um, and I think that um, Bro producing logs is uh, a feature. Um, you, know, you don't always need a, you know, a stack trace to prove that something is wrong inside of your environment. You know, a syslog is very useful. Um, and many problems, if not most, at least in the IT world, can be solved with audit logs. So, um, Bro is an IDS. So, uh, I, I think I'm, from this side of the room, there's some cringing going on if I'm <laughs> saying Bro IDS. Um, but uh, I, I, I'd like to just talk about this briefly. Um, you know, in recent years, it was rebranded as NSM. Um, and I think that there's some confusion in the world about that for people that you know, per, are perhaps coming at it uh, from you know, uh, a world of IDS, IPS, and nothing else. Um, so you know, Bro is not a traditional pattern matching signature based IDS, but it can be used to kind of do a similar job, but in a more kind of expressive way, right? So um, I started thinking about this and you know, trying to figure out, well, what is an intrusion detection system? And so I, of course, looked it up on Wikipedia, and I asked uh, my smartphone about what an intrusion detection is, uh, system is. And um, an intrusion detection system is a device or software application that monitors network or system activities for malicious activities. Um, without reading this entire slide out to you, uh, uh, an intrusion detection system comes in a couple of flavors. Um, those flavors are signature-based and statistical anomaly-based. Um, I don't think a lot of people like you know think about this in um, you know you know kind of this context, right? So a signature isn't necessarily just um, a regex, right? Um, a signature can also be uh, some sort of attribute or some state that you want to alert about, right? And so the other type of IDS that uh, Wikipedia mentions is a statistical anomaly-based IDS. This type of IDS um, monitors network traffic and compares it against a baseline. Um, and uh, essentially, when the network traffic strays from that baseline, you get an alert. So um, like I said, Bro is an attribute-based IDS. I uh, don't want to use the word signature here. Um, allows you to define complex implementation-specific policy, and leverage Bro's really expressive programming language to pick out things that you know are bad. Um, you can you know, use the logging framework, the notice framework, to alert on things. Um, you can uh, ingest things from other parts of your environment. So you, know, you can match up uh, you know, usernames and MAC addresses and IP addresses. You can count things. Um, and you have a really robust protocol parser at your disposal to do cool things with. So um, examples of really cool bro scripts, uh, the sidejacking script that came out in 2010-ish, um, the heartbleat detector, uh, the port scan detector, brute force detector. So these aren't pattern matching, right? They employ logic and counting. They benefit from flow-based metadata, and they're stateful. And I think that the, these things um, are things that you really want to think about when you're trying to develop um, you know, a killer bro app, right? These, these attributes are things that bro is really good at. And if you need these type of things with network data, this is the kind of problem you want to solve with bro. So bro is a statistical anomaly-based IDS. So I'm sensing a lot more cringing coming from this side of the room. Um, bro, it, it intuitively seems like Bro could do something like this, right? So Bro has the ability to do mathematical operations. Um, bro has the sum stats framework. Um, so you have uh, a uh, API for doing statistics and for doing clustering. Um, the literature suggests otherwise. So. Uh, I started thinking about this, and you know, I'm wondering, you know, has this been done before? Because we talk to customers and people and you know, introduce them to Bro, and they're like, oh, well, 
what can you do with this? And the first thing that people say is like, hey, I want to baseline what's normal and know what's, n and then peel out what's not normal. And um, we, you know, I, I thought about this. I was like, okay, yeah, this is like something I could do in some stats framework. So like, let's say for instance, I wanted to find out what a normal connection duration is inside of my network and then when when uh, those connection durations get super long, well, maybe that's a data exfiltration because a big file is leaving or something like that. Um, it turns out a lot of people have been thinking about this for quite a long time. Um, back in 1987, uh, in a paper called An Intrusion Detection Model, uh, which uh, is a, a very kind of high level paper, I, I encourage you to take a look at it and read it. Um, essentially, it frames out this, this framework for what um, you know, would become uh, network intrusion detection systems. And uh, Dorothy Denning, uh, the author of the paper, uh, described you know, a system that was both rule-based and statistical anomaly-based. Um, and uh, so essentially, it's, it's not a new idea, right? Um, this paper has been cited over 3,000 times in Google Scholar. Um, so I, I started wondering about this because you know, 27 years later, uh, you know, we haven't seen anything like this. So I, you know, there, there have been some tools that, you know, say they, they, they do this anomaly detection, they'll do machine learning and things like that, but I have not seen anything like that, right? And so I started digging a little further and um, wondering, you know, is this something that I want to try to implement? Like, is this something that Bro is the right tool for? Because the data is there, the programming language is there. Um, should, should we try to implement this? Um, it turns out uh, that uh, there is some more literature on this, and it comes from the Bro community. Um, Robin and Vern wrote a paper back in 2010 uh, called Outside the Closed World on Using Machine Learning for Network Intrusion Detection. Um, this paper is really good. I encourage you to check, take a look at this, too. It really uh, uh, you know, kind of shines some, some major light on you know, things that you can do with Bro for me. Um, personally, but um, so essentially, uh, the main idea of this, is, as I interpreted it, um, was that detecting adversaries with anomaly detections is really difficult, and there's a lot of research on the topic, and there's not a lot of machine learning and anomaly detection deployed in production, um, and uh, they they listed some reasons why. So um, there aren't a lot of good data sources for these, uh, these algorithms to train themselves on and for uh, you know, essentially people that are researching this uh, to use to find attacks, right? Um, network traffic um, intuitively seems like uh, you know, it's something that could be uh, baselined, right? So my SSH server probably has you know, an average length of a connection, right? Uh, it turns out it probably doesn't, unless you get very, very, very granular. Um, and uh, this, this was really interesting to me. Um, if, I don't, if anyone has tried to do baselining in the some stats framework, it, you know, it's, you'll end up with a heck of a lot of alerts and not a lot of information. Um, but you, know, you may find something that's, that's interesting. And as, as long as you aggregate a lot, uh, at least in terms of what this paper says, uh, you'll get some interesting results. Um, and also, so the output of these algorithms are really, really hard to interpret. So at least in terms of uh, some, some security value. So what do I know if uh, you know, the, the length of a connection has grown by a couple of seconds every hour? I have no idea. It doesn't really tell me anything. So um, and Robin, uh, I think that uh, if, if I'm saying anything wrong or anything like that, please correct me. OK. So. Uh, some of the, the conclusions were that um, understanding who might attack you and what they might do to your environment is really important. Um, and understanding what problem you're trying to solve is also really important. And making an output that people can understand that they won't misinterpret and um, spend a lot of cycles you know, chasing, down, um, you know, detect, you know, chasing down alerts and things like that that are false positives, um, that's, that's also going to you know, help these things, you know, be better or be useful. Um, so I went on a little bit of a tangent here. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna kind of conclude a little bit from this. So Bro. So we started off talking about Bro as you know, kind of an attribute-based IDS. 
then we migrated to talking about it as a statistical based IDS. Right? Bro is really good for writing expressive network centric policy. So you can, you know, you can define really, really, you know, kind of granular things with Bro and alert on interesting things. Um, Bro is really good at extracting data from the network. Everyone that's here probably does that. And that may be one of the primary reasons why they use Bro. Um, and finally, anomaly detection and machine learning may be the wrong tools for attack detection. So baselining and anomaly detection are really hard to get security value out of. So um, the reason why I'm talking about all of this is uh, I've, I've been, like I said, talking to, to people that are going to be future Bro users um, or are just starting, and they're like, what the heck do I do with this programming language? This data is really good, but I don't really know what to do beyond this. And so um, I'm, I've got some suggestions um, for uh, people that are just beginning to use Bro or want to get more value out of Bro. Um, one, one of those is to bring more data in. So um, make, it, make Bro work for you. So bring in IP to max user mappings. So if you can get that data from somewhere, do it, right? And you know, having the radius analyzer is going to be very helpful in this, um, you know, DHCP analyzer, those type of things. Um, you know, bringing th things like knowing what OS is going on, you know, or, or what, what OS is being used on the network, or what OS an alert is coming from is really useful. You know, other site-specific info. Every network is different. You know, you really want to be able to, you know, write bro policy to your needs. So if there's something that is necessary for you to, to, to you know, to know about to make any kind of, you know, reaction, um, bro needs to know about it so you can script it. So um, next, uh, I think that uh, extracting more data is really useful. So um, Bro, uh, the, the data that Bro extracts, just stock, is fantastic. But m there are certain things that you may want to know more about. Um, and if you have uh, a hefty Splunk license, which I'm sure some of you do and some of you don't, um, or uh, you have a uh, uh, Elasticsearch cluster with a heck of a lot of uh, space on it and CPUs, uh, you, you might want to just load as much data in there as possible because, you know, essentially, Bro can extract all of this data and you want to have as much of it as you can if you are trying to investigate some sort of, you know, compromise or something like that. So um, over the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk about uh, um, extracting more relevant data with Bro and um, what I mean by relevant data. So I think that Bro can be used to create new data and create more interesting data and more easy to interpret data. And that's something that, is, uh, that I encourage people to focus on. So um, actually, I might have jumped ahead real quick. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about bringing data into Bro. So, so we know that context is necessary. So we started this off and said, hey, I can't interpret a snort alert without looking it up in Bro or looking at uh, you know, my, my audit logs for my system right, and figuring out some kind of lower level data about what's happening. But the context that I need sometimes exists inside of an analyst's head. Right? And so, so and we call this meat space. So as opposed to cyberspace, there is meat space. And meat space isn't useful to us because Bro doesn't run on it. It's not scriptable. Um, meat space uh, has memory corruption problems. And uh, you have to you know, let meat sleep and feed it and all of these things that really don't contribute to securing your environments. Um, so uh, context, this context that you need in your NSM sensor you know, needs to exist in your NSM sensor. So you, don't want, you want to take as much away from you know, your analyst and as, much, you know, much, as many cycles away from your analyst as possible and put them in, inside of your NSM sensor. Um, so like I said, you know, machines should work. People should think. Um, so if, if you have this context, so 
things like IP to map mappings, or mappings and uh, you know, usernames and things like that and OSs, you can apply appropriate policies to hosts on your network. And I, I recognize that you know, these, this type of data isn't always going to be available and it's not always going to be good, um, but you, you have to make some assumptions and make some leaps of faith when you're using networking data. And um, it's better, in my opinion, uh, to sometimes rely on the tool to make those leaps of faith than rely on your analyst because the tool is repeatable and your analyst is not. Um, the, 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 type of, the type of thing that I'm, I'm thinking about is uh, like using Bro in a way like, um, like a next-gen firewall is used, right? So you, know, if you, if you guys have probably all written firewall policy in the past and you've tried to block a website, right? So imagine, imagine trying to block a website in 2014 using an IP address. You, it's not going to be possible. Right? And, and the same thing goes for NSM policy, where you're writing, these, you're writing these policies in terms of IP addresses and ports and things like that, but when really you know, there's all of these other layers of ab abstraction and other things that are really important that you, know, you should have coded into your, uh, your NSM. So um, this is the real meat of the talk. If you guys are probably wondering, you know, like, what are you talking about? Uh, and uh, you know, are you going to show anything interesting? Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit um, about semantics real quick before we get into this. Um, there, uh, there are two types of, of data that I'm going to talk about here in the next couple of slides. One I'll refer to as attributes, and the other one I'll refer to as features. An attribute is kind of uh, like a raw piece of data that you'd get out of Bro. Um, you know, an attribute could be like a user agent string, or actually probably more of a quantitative variable, so something like a, a byte count or something like that, and a feature would be a function on that byte count. Um, so an example of a feature um, is something like the uh, SSH success criteria. So uh, in Bro, uh, you guys are probably familiar with this and you know, probably have had some issues with it maybe. Um, but essentially, um, Bro doesn't know uh, whether or not an SSH session is successful, right? And it essentially uses byte counts to heuristically guess whether or not the, the session happened and it was successful or it failed. So that's really useful. Um, it's, it's not always reliable, um, but it's really useful nonetheless because you know, essentially, we have this piece of raw data um, that uh, you know, an analyst could look at and infer things from, um, but that's not scriptable. And when we take a leap of faith and say, hey, you know, this threshold says, yeah, maybe, maybe this session is successful. I can write policy around that and do really cool things. Um, so th these are the type of things that, uh, that I'm interested in. Um, so uh, at FlowCon this year, um, uh, John Gerth and Carter Bullard uh, uh, presented on a new flow metric, um, and this flow metric is called the producer-consumer ratio. Um, and I thought this was really interesting, and uh, I couldn't really wait to implement it in Bro. Um, so the idea here is that uh, all network nodes are producers and consumers of data, and um, when uh, in, in this I guess let me back up for a moment. This, this tool or this, this, this ratio is to help figure out whether or not uh, data exfiltration is going on. So help you interpret data flows across your network. So the idea here is um, you know, computers or producers or consumers of data in, per flow or aggregated across flows, and we want to know about that. So uh, the producer-consumer ratio is pretty simple. Um, so it is essentially uh, the uh, payload bytes, uh, the source payload bytes minus the destination payload bytes, or shall I say the originator uh, payload bytes and the respond minus the responder payload bytes divided by the originator uh, uh, payload bytes plus the destination or responder payload bytes. And what it yields is a, uh, a metric between negative one and one. And um, essentially uh, a negative uh, a negative PCR would, uh, would 
you know, say that you know, someone was uh, a consumer of data and uh, a uh, positive PCR would mean they're a producer. So what does that mean? Um, it's, it's an easy metric to interpret. So I can write bro policy on this really easily. I could say something like, um, you know, this is, this is going to be a terrible example, but uh, I could say something like if um, there is, you know, a, pr a data producer going on to a host that I don't know of, you know, maybe something, you know, out of my network or out of the normal networks that I interact with, um, then alert me. Um, and it kind of obscures um, figuring out, you know, what the byte counts are and things like that. And it gives you something that's kind of repeatable and interesting. Um, you can also uh, kind of baseline, if you will, um, what normal network traffic looks like. And I've, I've looked at this, and I'll show you an example uh, in, I guess, this slide. Um, essentially, there are certain, certain flows have certain PCRs, and uh, DNS uh, is pretty predictable. Um, so I'll, I'm going to exit out of here. Um, I'm taking, speaking of leaps of faith, I'm uh, opening up a browser window here. <laughs> this worked really well. So uh, I saw the demo this morning, and I was super stoked about it, and uh, I had to try it out. So uh, I've got some code that I'm going to be releasing um, today uh, that essentially uh, computes this PCR in, um, in Bro and also produces an aggregate PCR um, for, uh, for per minute. Um, but essentially, uh, you'll see here that um, I've appended a column on the com log, and I am doing it on the exercise traffic. And um, so this is a DNS event, and most DNS events that aren't uh, NetBIOS events um, have a PCR that's pretty close to negative uh, 0.71. And uh, what that means is, uh, you know, it's primarily a pull. So if you think about DNS traffic, you know, you're sending a small request and getting a lot of information back. And, uh, you know, it turns out you're getting, uh, you know, about, uh, I don't know, so well, I'm not... I'm, Oh, it's okay. It's, this isn't, I'm not doing this live. Oh. So I, I ran it earlier, and uh, I, I know not to do a live demo. <laughs> 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 so anyways, uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, and I'll share that with you. You'll find it on the Reservoir Labs GitHub over, uh, you know, probably by the end of the day today or early tomorrow. I haven't uploaded it yet. Um, so let's, hopefully this will go back to the same slide I was on. Okay. Okay, so um, another thing that I, I find pretty interesting is uh, polling connections with Bro. And um, this is a fairly new feature. I, I don't know, it's 2.1 or 2.2, but it hasn't been really discussed a heck of a lot, and so I wanted to draw some attention to it. Um, you know, so the idea here is that um, Bro, Bro produces summaries of network, you know, of traffic flows, right? But um, a summary is really interesting, but there's, certain times where you want to know what's going on while the flow is happening. And um, one, of those, one of the reasons you'd want to do that is to count bytes. Um, so uh, I, I went on a run, uh, it, and I was you know, kind of thinking, you know, what, what can I use Bro for, and like, what problem is like, not solved by it right now? And I was thinking about it. and, and it turns out that there's a lot of traffic that's encrypted, and um, I don't really know what's going on in these encrypted flows, right? So I've got these summaries of network traffic. Like, I can sometimes tell when, uh, like, a file is leaving based on these byte counts. Um, things like PCR are really helpful, but um, at the end of the day, I don't really know exactly what the anatomy of the flow looked like, right? So. Um, I thought about it on my run, and um, it, 
I, I want to detect data exfiltration. So I want to know when a file is leaving and when it's leaving it over an encrypted medium. And this is a really hard challenge. And I, this is, um, I, I want to caveat what I'm saying here in, in that um, you know, there are plenty of ways to uh, get around uh, this bro script that I wrote. Um, but uh, it is interesting, at least in my opinion, nonetheless. So um, the intuition here is that um, when a file is transferred, um, byte rates spike, so they go up. And when the file transfer is over, the byte rate goes back down. And so um, I wanted to test this and see if it worked. So um, you know, I started looking for uh, flows with more upstream bytes and increased rate byte rates during file transfers. So um, also, I was wondering, you know, if, if, if the byte rate goes down in the middle of a session, can I guess how big the file is? And uh, it turns out, uh, under certain circumstances, this is totally possible. Um, so I wrote this code quite a while ago. Um, and this was, I wrote it before uh, polling. The, the bro script was, was out in the main branch. So I kind of adapted it for, uh, for my own purposes. So you're, you're going to see kind of a, uh, something that may be a little familiar in terms of if you've seen the, the polling script. Um, but it has a lot of, uh, a lot of kind of other other stuff attached to it. So um, these the, the scripts, it, it comes in three parts. Um, and I, I, I wanted to, uh, to kind of model uh, the, the, the script so it could be extendable. So essentially, we've got a main part of the bro script that essentially does the polling. You can set thresholds for what uh, a file transfer looks like. So essentially, um, if you remember, the intuition was that file that byte rates are going to spike when a file is being transferred. So uh, what we do is uh, we uh, have this, this, what we'll call a framework, um, that is able to be attached to any connection. And um, we watch the byte rate. And if it spikes above a certain level, then we start counting. And um, we count until that spike ends. And then when the spike ends, we output a value. Um, so this, this here, which is a little bit more complicated than I'm comfortable getting into on stage, um, is what does that byte counting. Um, but this, this is what I think more interesting. Um, we, we can attach you know, essentially any connection to this counting script and um, alert on it. Um, furthermore, if we're attaching a connection, we can write policy scripts that um, that utilize this. So, so there's three parts. There's the main framework, so the library, right? And then there's the part of the script that attaches to connections and chooses which connections should be watched for what I'll call data exfiltration. And um, there's a policy script here that checks to see if the data exfiltration event that we defined happens between the business hours of our enterprise. So um, in this policy script, we can, um, we can say, OK, my, uh, my enterprise uh, starts at 6 and ends at 1,700 hours. And anything after that might be anomalous. Um, this probably doesn't apply to most of your networks. Some of it, it probably will, though. So um, this, this, this is kind of an example of, of, of something that, that I think is really useful um, for, for, for more than one reason. Um, one, it extracts more data than you, you'd normally have just from a you know, regular old um, base bro flow. Um, it doesn't really scale, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine that uh, it's a, a really great idea for the bro team to turn on by default for every, every flow or you know, really anything that they'd want to develop. But in certain cases, it's very, very useful. And um, I think that uh, it, it's, it's an example that also uh, you know, integrates policy from your environment, right? So, so not only are we detecting these, you know, what we'll call data exfiltration events, but also we're uh, integrating uh, the, um, you know, some context for uh, for the environment it's in. Uh, this this script um, or these scripts are also going to be uh, up on the Reservoir Labs GitHub um, by the end of today or early tomorrow, and. Um, I'd really like to uh, get some feedback on them. And please uh, make changes, fix things, make them more efficient. 
uh, and uh, yeah, do do what you will with them. Uh, so. Okay, so I'd like to summarize real quick. Bro can be used for a lot. My goal today was to kind of deconstruct what Bro is used for and use it to, uh, you know, illuminate what Bro is good at, and um, you know, talk about um, you know some kind of successful things I've seen done uh, with streaming Bro. So uh, that's all I've got. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feel free. Um, thanks. All right, I'll call that good. Um, have I run that on any inter enterprise network? So, yes, I have, um, but I haven't done anything that's anywhere near uh, exhaustive, um, and I. I, th I wouldn't turn it on um, on your production environment for all connections. I think that it would be very useful for certain connections. And you know, if you're if you're choosy about what you what you attach to that framework, then I think you'll be pretty safe. But um, that that question might be uh, better asked of of you know Seth. He, he probably has a better idea of what I, the I, impact. I, I want to make sure we're still together. Right? Okay. Yeah, so it's essentially like it's essentially like what the polling script does. So I don't know what the implications of, you know, introducing yeah, polling are. That's, that's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, agreed. So yeah, I, try it out and see what happens.